All right, guys, so I'm back here with the uh, chess up um, e board. And my goal here is to uh, not just with this board, but with all of my e boards, is to uh, play uh, rapid games and begin doing a lot more instructional videos and study videos and so and give more commentary to people. Uh, you know, apparently like the, like that, and I like doing it as well. So um, here I'm going to try to get a nice rapid game going, and let's just see how long it takes us to get. Let's see what kind of rapid game can we get. I want to do something with increment. I guess I'll just do fifteen ten. Uh, that could be. You know what? I'm going to try something else. Let me let me try. I wish I could do. Let's see, custom time controls. Uh, oh, let's just try 10-5. Yeah, there, there we go. Let's go with 10-5. I think that'd be a good one. All right. So anyway, back to what I was saying. I want to do our rapid games with all my boards now and to, um, you know, actually um, just give a, a lot more study tutorial videos, on, as I just said. And um, one of the things that kind of prompted me to do, is it, to do this is that, you know, um, Chess Up 2 just was released and well, not released. Really, sorry. They just they not too long ago just revealed that. And so basically what's going to happen is that I think it'll be released slated to be released in November. It seems to be heavily integrated with chess.com. And apparently it, it appears that you will probably be able to use the board without having to use the app, you know, at all. That does not mean I wouldn't think that you could not still use the board with other third party things like Fritz. Um, what else? Lucas Chess, Bear Chess, and other third-party programs, just the same. So, yeah. So, so that's that. So, uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, again, as you might have noticed in my in my video playlist, is that there are many more. Uh, I have a series now going on called Techniques for the Win, and it's basically just positional ways in other words it's not i'm trying my goal is not necessarily to have like a tactical puzzle because you can get tactics from anywhere but my goal more or less is just to take a position and try to help you develop ways to think about positions and how to develop ideas for positions and things like that so that's sort of where i want to go with, with that series because again i think that what carries you to the next level is just your ability to develop you know plans Again, tactics always going to happen. Tactics always going to be there. Everybody, uh, no matter how good you are, probably always going to study tactics. But again, trying to study technique is a is a tough one. It's kind of like studying the middle game, which is a tough one. But still, you you got to put in that grind if you really want to take your game to the next level here. So it appears that I'm not really getting a game here. This ten five. I guess nobody likes ten five. I guess I'll try 15, 10. It, it, you know, I hope the game doesn't last too long. But um, let's try that one there. Because again, sometime on, or, 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 and I may even just go back and just switch to, to Lee Chess there. Because it may be, because again, the user is easier to get a uh, longer time control game on that, on that website. Okay, finally we got a game. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to play my D4. Everybody knows if you enter D4, um, what happened? Did he quit? What happened here? Oh, there we go. This must have been some sort of just hiccup right there in the beginning. All right. Everybody knows I play D4, so I'm just kind of not going to talk too much about the moves unless something interesting happened until we actually get to some playing moves here. Yeah, this is pretty interesting here. He's going to play D4 next more than likely. Yeah. Oh, he played D. I mean, D5, he played D6. Okay. Interesting. That's sort of a, almost sort of, this is sort of like a, a, um, a perk defense, almost like the check variation, which is a very, uh, which is a variation. I kind of know uh, semi well actually, as black. I don't know too much how to play against it as white, but in blitz chess, check variation is a pretty good one. All right. So let's see what I'm going to do here. Yeah, I'll just keep carrying on with the typical plane to go C4. I mean, I'll C4. That's why I wonder why he didn't play solid opening, but most players would just want to head and just contest at the center here a little bit. I guess he's going to contest the center with uh, E5 at some point. Let's see what else we got here.
my thought here is that if I can get in a swift uh, E5, okay. Yeah, I guess the, the, the normal thing to do here would just play E5 here. <coughs> now he probably, won't, I, mean, I mean E4, I'm assuming he wants to play E5 here now. Okay, so he plays that. Well, one thing I can tell you is this, one trick here is whenever you play, usually this, whenever you play this uh, bishop here against the knight, for example, that's on say F3, F6, if, you're, if you have a fianchetto bishop, it's not that annoying because if I push now H3, either you have to trade that bishop pair in or you have to retreat your knight. So trading the bishop, so either way, it's more of a, it's not like it's like losing anything for black, but it's, you know, more advantageous for white or decided that, that, that trades the knight for the bishop. I mean, my queen is okay place. I don't have to move it anywhere for right now. Um, it's, yeah, it's just not really um, any sort of, um, you know, thing to worry about here. Um, I see that his, he, he is sort of kind of attacking a pawn right now, but um, that's not too bad. I mean, I can just all my rook needs to be in a better file anyway, so we can just simply go here just like that. I guess the only good thing about it is that you could, he could have pushed e5. I take on e5. He could take back on e5 with his rook instead of having to take with his pawn, which is, I guess, you know, maybe could be a good thing for him. So I guess now I will pull my rook over here because I want to put my bishop on uh, e3. And although his queen does have a snug spot as well over here on uh, B6, um, it's a little bit far away from the action. I kind of I kind of figured he might would might would have pushed that pawn there. And um, let's see here. I guess we'll have to push. Well, we could. Hmm. Kind of seeing a thought I saw a trick here, but I don't know if I really want to go for that. Yeah, I'll just push my pawn up here. I am creating a hole for his knight, but again, you have to, um, you know, pick your poison in some cases. But if he pops his knight, I'm just going to put my bishop on d3 and probably just take that knight. Oh, interesting. Did not really expect that, but. Um, I guess I'll put my bishop up here because now the I, one of my ideas is I want to push b4 at some point. Probably a3, b4. I mean, a, yeah, a3, b4, I think might be my at least a plan right here for right now. But but he also can play a5 if he wants. But he's playing a little passive, so let's just see what he does. He doesn't, and the thing about it, <coughs> when he did that, he didn't really have it <coughs> anywhere to hop his knight, which I thought was not really a good idea. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and push up to here. If he goes a5, okay, so he didn't go a5. He's playing quite passive here. I mean, not again, it doesn't mean like he's losing anything like that, but um, I guess by default, I'd, I, I had, I'd had to push this to justify. If I just keep clamping down his knights, I think I'm improving my position. And that's another thing. You kind of look at your pieces versus your opponent's pieces. I think my pieces are generally better placed it doesn't mean like he's necessarily losing or, or whatever, but I'd rather play as white right now. It's a little bit more straightforward to play. And so sometimes you want to get yourself in a situation where you can play a little bit easier. Because, I mean, I got clear plans here that goes like A5 um, or, or bring my knight to A4. Um, yeah, it's just so many um, 
ways for me to play here. Let's see, because I think yeah, it's starting to heat up a little bit here, so I'm gonna have to slow down here and think. Okay, so he takes, which is which, which is um, you know, normal here. Okay, so I just realized that I actually just dropped a pawn technically, and I didn't even see it. I didn't even see that actually. But that's okay. You gotta live with your mistakes. We'll go here. And like I said, and I've said in plenty of videos in the past, it's, <laughs> it's pretty, um, uh, it's a really good skill to be able to talk and to, um, you know, play chess at the same time. I still like my position, even though I just dropped a pawn for nothing, but I still think my position is stronger than his. I mean, Bishop F1 is coming, maybe even knight to uh b5 in some cases from like b5 to like c7 i mean there's a lot of things that could happen here That's probably why he's thinking so long. He's probably trying to figure out what to do with his queen at this point because his queen really doesn't have, it's not like he's, I mean, his queen's not lost or anything, but it's just that he really is on that foul and he just really can't stop me from, from attacking his queen with a knight jump at some point, almost. I mean, he could bring his queen to, that would that would trap his queen actually if he brought his queen to uh, d3. Cause bishop f1 i mean that's i'm almost certainly going to play that next move if he don't move his queen and if he does move his queen i'm almost certainly going to play um knight to c5 i mean b5 i mean his knights are just hobbling on top of each other he doesn't really have any good squares for his knights um you know, my pieces are just a little, even though I just dropped a pawn, uh, my, my pieces are, I, I think, uh, seemingly are a bit better placed. Uh, I have good, uh, my bishop, my dark square bishop is controlling some key squares from his only knight that do have a square to go to, a reasonable square anyway. And, hmm. I mean, I guess the best move, I mean, I probably would go like Rook to, to C8 here because, again, I can't really hop my knight just yet and get anything that's good. I'd have to go Bishop back first. And then if I did, and I don't even think I can go Knight to B5. I could, but if he get his queen back to C7 and then go to uh, B8, then if I go rook takes rook, then he can go rook takes rook, and I can't really take uh, on d6 with the knight because the queen will still be protecting that. Yeah, that's what I thought he might would do. Okay, so that really, I think I just, that wins me the exchange. Unless he's going to take two pieces for the queen. I think this wins me the exchange. Let me see. Am I going blind here? Maybe I'm blind, but we'll see. Again, unless he takes two pieces, yeah. And then we'll just go here. 
Yeah, we'll just go ahead and take the two pieces. I mean, we'll go ahead and take the rope. Okay, there we go. So now, I guess I could bring my rook down. No, but if I bring my rook down, let me think about this. He's going to pull his rook over, then I have to trade rooks. And then if, if I pull my other rook over, we still will trade rooks and he can still attack my rook and I'd have to retreat it. I'm trying to figure out, is there any way that I could not have to retreat my rook? It doesn't appear to be the case. But I guess that might be the best thing to do if he want to trade rooks, because that way um, I just got to keep up the pressure here. Oh, he goes there. Now that's something. I mean, that kind of just gives me a free, a free. Um, yeah, I, I thought he would have pulled his rook over. It would have been better just to. Okay, that that was good too. Wasn't bad. But I still got control of the foul. That's the point. I guess I'll back my rook up to here. I still got control of the foul. And that's the point. And um, I mean, there's essentially nothing that he can do about that at this point. Because my dark square bishop is really holding a nice square from that knight on a, on a b6. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so now, what can we do? I got to get my queen somewhere that makes sense here. Yeah, I've got to back my queen out here. I got to get my queen to a better position here. Because I ain't worried about that pawn. That pawn is going nowhere. That pawn is going absolutely nowhere. Because my next move is to bring my queen to, let's see, b5. Okay. And then I'm probably at some point going to infiltrate onto C8. And yeah, okay, that's what he did that. I kind of figured he, obviously he was going to do that. So now we are going to go to, to here. And I see that pawn is going nowhere. And I still got all his knights like wrapped down. They can't do anything. I mean, it can't even really stop me from taking this pawn, but I ain't even sweating taking this pawn right now. This pawn kind of doesn't mean anything to me right now. Because if you move his queen off that back rank, I'm going straight down our rook to c8, and that's really going to cause some problems for him, I think. Let's see here. Because all his pieces really are in a bind, sort of. If you really look at it, they're not really bound like that, but like he's sort of everything is babysitting. It ain't really babysitting a piece, but it's babysitting me from doing something. And again, my dark square bishop has, I think, um, held some squares away from those from that knight to hop. Because if he could have hopped that knight to b6 and maybe got in to say, I don't know, just somewhere, you know, and it say. I don't know, like a C, C4, A4 maybe might, might be a different case, but 
as it stands, his nights are incredibly um, mis I wouldn't say misplaced, but it definitely hobbled over each other right now. Okay, I kind of figured he might would do that. And so now this right here, I think is going to cause him some trouble. Okay, because now I think this here is going to cause some trouble here. Because he could get made it here very easy if he don't be careful. Because a dog square is going to become very vulnerable around his king real easy if he don't uh, be careful here. Okay. Kind of figured he might would do that. So that means we're going to go ahead and take here with check. Yeah, this is mate here. Gonna, well, will be mate. He can't stop it. Because it's because uh, my bishop here is going to come down to here. And there is, I think, nothing he can do about that. I mean, he can get one check. Well, actually, two checks in, but they're not really going to do anything. Oh, that was sneaky. If I didn't do it, he could actually. Look at that. He almost got me. But unfortunately, I saw it. So there you have it. So that's it. So anyway, uh, wow, that was a really good game. I think that my opponent um, played a bit too passive in those games, did not contest his center early on. He hobbled his knights, meaning that he got his knights in a position where like one knight was kind of blocking the other. And then, and then he also got his knights in a position where they actually had to protect each other in order for them to make sense once I got my queen down there. And then he took that pawn. But what I think is that actually, let me just go to game review really quick. I just want to see at that point where he took the pawn, um, what did it uh, say? Here we go. Let's go to taking that pawn. So actually looking at the um, looking at the gra <laughs> graphic, I was never losing. So him taking this pawn. Let's see. I push. OK, so it didn't it, it, it didn't really change. It. See what I'm saying? Remember what I told you in that position? I still think that my pieces were active. It didn't really change the evaluation all that much. If you look at the line where it's at now. And it just increasingly gets worse for him until it just kind of plateaus. I mean, I kind of just probably made a slightly inaccurate move here, but this is a very move that causes some pressure and causes things to happen. Like, for example, what he did in this move right here was a was just a straight blunder because this right here was the move that I was waiting to happen. Because once I get the knight down, I mean, get this rook down there, he's in trouble. This the, the knight on um on um d8 is hanging. Um, he has to take with his rook. Um, he can't protect a knight with a knight because, you know, by going to F6, because obviously I, I'm going to take just like I did in the game. So there you have it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that commentary video. I really did enjoy making that. And again, um, I'm going to try to do at least one of these, uh, maybe two of these a week. And there's try maybe I'll say one starting out because again, I do have a full time job and lots of other things to do. But I'm going to try to do these at least once a week and do some commentary games and try to get better and better at commentating and playing at the same time so I can give you guys the best available, you know, um, I guess, um, commentary while I'm playing as I, as I can. So anyway, you guys take care. Let me down and let me know down in the comments what you think. And um, hey, I'd be happy to keep this up. Just show me some love just by hitting that like button and sharing. And that's pretty much it. You guys take care and I'll see you in the next one.